Dear ladies and gentlemen, this is day 197 of the Russian invasion and the ninth war of the Russian Federation against Ukraine. My name is Andriy Shevchenko. On behalf of Media Center team, I'm welcoming all journalists that share the news to the world with the world about our fight for freedom. Today we have a special event. We are going to talk about European Heritage Days, which will be held in Lviv in the nearest three days. So this initiative, um, started in 19 uh, in 1991 by the European Council and uh, uh, the idea is to raise interest to um, cultural her heritage and unknown pages of uh, Ukrainian cultural heritage. Our guest uh, today is Christina Lebich, head of tourism office of Lviv City Council. Let me remind you that Lviv City Council and Christina Lebich in person initiated um, creating this uh, media center that makes this event uh, even more enjoyable. Why does Lviv need the Days of European Heritage in 2022? Thank you, Andriy. Uh, thank you, um, all our guests, all our spectators. Why do we need European Heritage Days today in 2022? The answer is uh, because we can't do otherwise. We can't do without such events because culture, history and uh, tourism remain important no matter what. Otherwise, we can't develop as a nation. Regardless tragic events that we all are witnessing, today we have unique opportunity of cultural exchange that is happening in our country. Thousands of Ukrainians, uh, of internally displaced people, live in Lviv currently. So they were forced out of their homes and they start their personal history anew. They learn about Lviv, about Lviv people. Uh, they learn to know um, Mariupol, Kharkiv people, etc. So this is due to tragic events, but that helps Ukrainians learn about each other, who, for a number of reasons, had to end up here. This cultural exchange uh, was very slow in the previous year, years, but these European Heritage Days today are very important because it's about our traditions, it's about our national heritage, it's about um, treasuring, cherishing, protecting what we have. The sculptures in Lviv are all hidden, all covered, all protected. So this is our national heritage that we want to preserve because we received it from our predecessors. Buildings and sculptures and architecture that was destroyed by Russians in other cities. It's something that has been taken away from us, but we have to remember about that. We have to keep talking about that and we need to know how we can rebuild it. This is part of the heritage that was lost but we can preserve it and we can rebuild it. And it's important to talk about that. And this we are going to discuss within the three days of European Heritage Days, which is going to be a unique event. It's going to be held for the 12th time. It's going to be even more important this year for the reasons that I had already mentioned. And these reasons are understandable today. There is huge interest um, to this event. Uh, we filled in our registry list within hours, within days, and the interest is very high. Lviv is the only city in Ukraine that has been organizing European Heritage Days for the 12th year. Such event, similar event, takes place in 50 cities worldwide. We are grateful to our overseas partners who share their experience, who support us, because they were the ones who offered their supportive shoulders during the 12 years of our activity, because sometimes um, things did not go exactly as we planned. But I can assure our partners that even after the days of um, European heritage, 
our partners can travel to other countries and share and learn their experience. Yulia Doliba, coordinator of European Heritage Days project, is um, welcome to join us. She's been working in Media Center Ukraine. She was part of our team and she contributed to creating comfortable conditions to journalists, uh, those who work in Ukraine. I have a, a program of uh, U European Heritage Days. It's a three-day event and it's full of uh, different events, quests, seminars, exhibitions, uh, etc. So what can visitors expect? Thank you very much for inviting me. Christina had already mentioned that we organize this event every year and today's topic is sustainable heritage. But Given the context we are living now today, it's hard to talk about sustainability because Ukrainians who created our country, our culture, our museums, uh, they are dying every day. Therefore, we um, interpre reinterpreted it, uh, preserved and renewed. Unfortunately, you cannot make it to all events because uh, the topic is very extensive. But I'd like to say that heritage, it's not only about architecture, it's about national and natural environment. For example, we have botanic garden uh, guided tour, we have a botanic um, museum guided tour on the plan. So. We don't even think that uh, these things have been preserved for centuries. Uh, even uh, um, the home, the shelter for uh, saved animals also is on the list. Today we are going to talk about Ukrainians who lived in Lviv, who contributed to development of this city and this country. We will be talking about the fate of uh, women uh, of Lviv during the Second World War. We are also talking about the role of women in this war. We will be talking about civilians, about military. We will be talking about cemeteries, because not only Lechakiv Cemetery is the known cemetery that um, we are proud of, but there is also Yanivsky Cemetery, where there are burials of um, Ukrainian insurgent army and uh, Sichovi Strelci. So there are a lot of facts we still don't know about our city, and it's a great incentive, it's a great push, momentum to learn about Lviv. But now we have thousands of guests, uh, new people who came to live in Lviv, so it's time to open this city. Nova Kachovka is also going to be present here. So, uh, Ms. Yevseyeva, who is uh, the architect from Nova Kachovka, she will be talking about the traditional embroidered shirt. Um, it will be the event that will help uh, to open the myth of unique heritage that we have in the east of Ukraine. Unfortunately, we keep losing a lot of things these days uh, when we are talking about culture. We will rebuild it, we will preserve what we have, and we will build new things uh, to commemorate those who are protecting us these days. Mikhailo Kobren, director of Solomia Kruselnitska Museum and Memorial Museum in Lviv. Mikhailo, uh, there are a series of events offered by museums, so there are guided tours, but I understand you are the veteran of European Heritage Days. You've been part of this event for years. What does it mean for you and for the museum that you represent? We have the veteran institution because 12 years ago I was a university student and um, I visited the events as a visitor, as a spectator. For me personally, it's unique and special days when the Lviv citizens and guests can uh, enter some unique venues that represent our history. Sometimes when you pass by, you dream of seeing what's behind the stage, behind the the scene. But this is a unique opportunity where all the closed doors open up. The doors of uh, hidden venues, unique venues that you always dreamt of seeing. 
The Museum of Solomia Kroshelnitska has always participated in European Heritage Days. We organize tours, we organize retro car exhibition, uh, the concert with cats. So we try to come up with some unique new ideas in order to popularize our history and our culture. This year is special for us because um, September is... Uh, anniversary year uh, month we are celebrating 150th anniversary of Solomia Kroshelnitska's birthday we had um, grand plans unfortunately our neighbors did not allow us to implement all the plans but I'd like to say that Solomia Kroshelnitska and uh, her personality is unique because she was cultural ambassador of Ukraine when Ukraine was not even an independent country. So during Austro-Hungarian Empire, between the two world wars, so she traveled worldwide, uh, four continents, 35 countries, um, a lot of cities, and she kept singing in Ukrainian. When asked, uh, what songs are you singing? She said, I was singing the songs of my people, of my country. Do we have questions? My question will be about the peculiarity of 2022. Yulia already mentioned that there will be Nova Kachovka featuring in the program. What other um, events will be uh, related to the war and the Russian invasion? One of the peculiarities of uh, this year's event is that uh, it's been organized regardless the war. We keep adding new but very important safety rules. That's another thing that posed a dilemma, moral dilemma, when we were considering organizing the event. And safety was one of the top priorities, especially during the pre-organization period involving all participants of this um, event. We made sure that um, people have quick access to shelter, that they have the map on their device devices, which allows them to find the shelter fast. Of course, this year organization was challenging, but we won't be humble. Uh, when we are talking about the range of events, the scale of events. And we are happy that our participants are brave enough to come and participate in the series of events. Speaking of events themselves, this is the history of New Kachovka, as had already been mentioned, when the guests from other cities uh, come to our event and they present their city. Of course, there are usual events. For example, this is um, reviving old things, preserving uh, sculptures, architecture, buildings that we probably underestimated before the war because they were the common place for us, common thing. So when the Lviv people meet next to Neptune um, figure, uh, that was a usual thing, but now when you say, okay, let's meet next to Neptune, Neptune so um, they, they keep thinking, okay, which one is Neptune out of uh, three fountains in Rinox Square? Today's event uh, sharpens the feeling of uh, uniqueness and contribution to the culture that um, we all live in. There are some events that are directly related to the war. I understand that there is a exposition about the children who died during this war. Are there any other events related to war? Yes, we have uh, the topic women in wartime, uh, also preservation of uh, monuments of uh, post-war Lviv, the history of commission that came to visit Lviv. Because I, I also am going to participate in this event. I signed up because it's interesting how they did it 100 years ago and how they are going to do it now, whether there is some resemblance. Also, we will be talking about um, 
coat of arms that ceased to exist, uh, disappeared uh, or were stolen. So also we will be talking about uh, the restored halls uh, of uh, Lviv Radio, about uh, the ancient cellars of Gem Factory Art Center, because Ukrainians, it's about the development and art, because we keep developing regardless the challenging times and I'm sure that we will win this war and of course I'd like to express my gratitude to the armed forces of Ukraine because we feel relatively safe we can organize projects like that and this is thanks to them because we are not thinking how to uh, save a picture how to escape the war we keep developing and this is thanks to the armed forces of ukraine and uh, we do it to make sure that they never feel ashamed of us and when they come back they will be happy with us among us if there are any other questions please let me know um, if not i have the question i keep this agenda if you can recommend me one event, I understand that this is probably a very challenging question, but can you recommend me one event that is worth visiting? I will be the least humble. Just welcome to visit our museum. Uh, tomorrow I will de deliver a lecture how to write a history, what we forget, what we renew, what we preserve. Also, Stanislav Lutkevich Museum will offer uh, the concert about the repressed composers. On Sunday we will have two lectures. Uh, one is dedicated to Kurtyna Parnas, uh, Nova Arkadia, Ivan Dudic, and also the lecture about Anna Krushelnitska, the sister of Solomia Krushelnitska, who also was an opera singer. Yulia, which event would you recommend? It's a very tricky question. I am a coordinator of the event. Mind you, I know all the events on the list. But let me be honest with you. I love uh, the women topic and history topic. So if I had to choose, uh, I would choose uh, the series of excursions, uh, Ukra um, Ukrainian superheroes. The uh, provost is uh, Natalia Zubik. She will be talking about people who created our independence and also women's topic, as I had already mentioned twice today, about Lviv women during the Second World War and uh, Lviv uh, women who are not in the names of our streets. We know little about women that were uh, members of Ukrainian insurgent army. They were in communications department. So there are a lot, a lot that we need to know and we need to keep talking because we are a European country and we, ha we share common European values. And I think that will stimulate people reconsider their values and their development. Christina? My recommendation would be to visit as many events as possible every day. But definitely you need to visit the locations that are closed during the year. For example, this is uh, the workshop that uh, will show how to renew things that people just toss. It's called Restav workshop. And, uh, also, uh, in Ruska Street, uh, there is um, the building that will be sharing the story about embroidered shirts. So this building has unique beauty, unique history. So you will see each and every unique detail of this building. It's a unique history that everybody has to know because you pass by and you need to know what there and you need to share the stories and you need to know how each tile ended up on this building. Christina Lebet, Yulia Doliba, Mikhailo Kobrin were our guests. They were talking about European Heritage Days that will be held in Lviv during um, the next three days. Uh, 